We need to let people know they have an enemy and they need to be well versed in what the Bible says about Satan and the devil and demons and evil spirits. And we need to know according to the word how to test and try the spirits and not believe everything that comes along. Come on! God has given us the ability to have discernment. If we'll live by what we sense in our heart instead of off the top of our head, we can even avoid being so desperately hurt by other people who pretend to be one thing and turn out to be something else. How many times do you just sense that something's not right? Something's not right, something's not right, but you can't really put your finger on it. You don't really get it. You don't really understand what it is. Now, sometimes you want to do something and it's right, but if that's the case, we'll have a lot of peace about that. But when you've got a fight going inside of you about something that you're getting ready to do, trust me, because we've all made mistakes, you're so much better off to follow what you believe is the Holy Spirit. And so you go ahead and go with your head and end up in a big mess. I've learned to pay attention to that. I don't want the enemy to use people anymore to try to destroy me. See, Satan will work through people. That's why you've it's not that we don't want to listen to people, but you have to listen to God first. We must obey a God rather than man. Don't miss your destiny because the enemy's working through somebody else, trying to tell you what you can't and what you're not and what you will never be. You listen to God, who says, "I can do all things through Christ, who is my strength." And God told Saul, "When the anointing comes upon you, you'll be turned into another man." Let me tell you something. Whatever you are in the natural, when God's anointing comes on you, you can become a totally different creation. Verse 23. But Jesus turned away from Peter and said to him, "Get behind me, Satan. Are you seeing this? You're in my way. You're an offense and a hindrance and a snare to me, for you are minding what partakes not of the nature and the quality of God, but of men." 1 Peter 5:8. Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. That means serious. Be vigilant and cautious at all times, for that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Man, just like a lion roams around at night looking for prey, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and Satan comes roaring like a lion, seeking someone to devour. Well. Everybody needs to make their mind up today. It's not going to be me. It's not going to be me. We must learn to live more carefully. Be alert. The Bible says, "Watch and pray." We need to watch and pray. The moment that you feel jealousy trying to get into your heart, you hear about a blessing from a friend. Well, maybe it's a friend that you you know you love them with the love of the Lord, but you don't really like them too much. And maybe you have a friend like that. And they've got something that you've wanted a long time, and you still don't have one, and you can feel that jealousy starting to rise up, and kind of a resentful attitude. Well, you know, right then, if you're alert, that's the time to say, "Nope, I resist you, Satan. You're not going to give me a bad attitude. I'm happy for them, and God, I thank you that you bless them. We got to resist. We can't just let these things happen." Ephesians 5:15 says. Look carefully then how you live. Who are your friends? What kind of people are you hanging out with? Do you hang around with people that make you better or people that drag you down? Do you hang around with people that tempt you to sin? How about hanging out with some people that edify you and lift you up and challenge you and make you a better person? When you are around them, you want to be nicer. You want to be kinder. You want to have better manners. You want to be more polite. You can change a lot in your life just by getting around some better people. Satan waits for us to open a door. He just waits and lurks for us to open a door. Ephesians 4:26 and 27. When you're angry, don't sin. Let's read that properly. It doesn't say that getting angry is a sin. It says when you feel anger, don't sin. Anger is a natural emotion. When somebody hurts you, You're going to feel anger, but the point is we have the control. 
the self-control as a gift from God where we don't have to respond according to the way we feel. When you're angry, don't sin. Don't ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury, your indignation last until the sun goes down. In other words, look at me when I tell you this. Don't go to bed mad. There's no telling what kind of advantage the enemy takes over us when we go to bed mad. If you go to bed mad, you're going to wake up mad and another day's going to be ruined. Some of you have been going to bed mad for 20 years. Maybe it's time for a turnaround in this place today. It's time for you to realize no matter what somebody's done to you, being angry at them is not going to solve the problem. And they're not the real problem to start with. They're somebody that's deceived and the enemy is using them trying to get to you. Now that doesn't mean they're not responsible for their behavior. That doesn't mean that, you know. We don't, oh well, it's not your fault, it's just the devil using you. Yeah, it's because each one of us have a responsibility to learn the word of God and not let the enemy use us. But maybe what we need to do today, instead of being so concerned about who the enemy's using to get to us, let's make sure that the enemy's not using us to get to somebody else. I'm quite sure the enemy has used me a number of times to hurt people's feelings. You know, people may not remember everything you said to them, but I'll tell you something, they will remember. They'll always remember how you made them feel. And we have the opportunity to either let God work through us or let the enemy work through us. God's also looking for people that he might use. Ephesians 5.15 Look carefully how you live. Live purposely and worthily. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. You believe things about yourself. You believe things about your past or your future. You may even believe things about God or other people that absolutely do not agree with the word of God. But sometimes we don't even pay enough attention to our own thoughts to realize that they're our real enemy. Come on, what have you been thinking about today so far? Some of you have been thinking good stuff, but some of you haven't. It's a fight. Luke 10 19 Behold, I have given you authority and power. Behold, I've given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. The way to win your battles is to realize, have your eyes wide open, realize what the enemy's trying to do and respond the exact opposite from the way he wants you to respond. Now, let me tell you something. Before you start doing that, you better know who you are in Christ. You need to know that God's given you this authority. Now, this says that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into that situation where he was going to be tempted and tried by the enemy. Now, I'm sure that doesn't make a lot of sense to us, but you know, sometimes God will allow us to be in a situation because he wants us to have a victory that we can put in our belt that will become valuable to us later on. Now, we have weapons. There's ways that we can fight the enemy, but they're not what you would think. You overcome evil with good. You got to get this today. You got to know who your enemy is and you got to know how to fight him. Satan is your enemy and you don't fight him the way you would think. It's the exact opposite. When he's mean to you, you be good to somebody else. That's how you fight the devil. When somebody hurts you, you pray for them. And it's not going to do any good to stand around and say, well, I wish I didn't feel this way. I wish I didn't feel this way. Instead of doing that, say, I don't care how I feel. I know what the word says and I'm not going to let my feelings control me. You know, if you don't need this today, you will in the future. Psalm 37, 12 and 13. The wicked plot against the uncompromisingly righteous. See, the wicked plot against those who are trying to live righteously. The devil plots against those who are trying to live righteously. Don't be surprised when you try to take a step to go forward and the enemy comes against you. The wicked plot against the uncompromisingly righteous, the upright and right standing with God. They gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day of defeat is coming. Nehemiah 8 The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, every day have several good belly laughs. Find some funny friends. 
Some of you are so serious, you're so deep, you don't even know where you're at anymore. Come on, let's lighten up a little bit. And I mean, if you don't have anything else to laugh at, laugh at yourself. Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. When you walk around with the presence of God on you, the enemy does not know what to do with you. Psalm 91, 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty.